Hello, welcome to the great outdoors. We're here at the uh, Seacrest Wool Preserve, and it's one of my favorite places to, to come, and we try to get here at least once or twice a year. Uh, I'd like to say that this visit was uh, gonna be a real adventure, a lot of fun, but we're here, we have a mission. Uh, a few months ago, during our uh, heavy rains and, and the rains that hit here in, in Florida and in Alabama, uh, Seacrest Wolf Preserve was uh, one of the areas that was damaged severely uh, when the dam broke down here on the uh, western side of the property. When that dam broke, all that water rushed down the little valley that's right here behind the enclosures. Uh, picked up all the logs and all the other stuff and then they say it looked like a tsunami and uh, when it hit that fence where the British wolves were it just ripped it open and uh, one or two of the wolves uh, were able to, to get out. Uh, they searched and searched and searched for the wolf. Uh, Florida Fishing Game got involved and a very sad ending to this story is that they ended up shooting Chaco, which was the name of the, the wolf. Uh, we'll get into that later. Uh, we're going to be talking to Miss Cynthia, who is the owner and probably the, the greatest wolf advocate in the, the United States and whoever else was here. And this is where we're going to start. Zal Vines and stay tuned. We'll be right back. One of the things uh, that's so important here at the Seacrest Wolf Preserve is that people understand that wolves, they're not the big bad animals that uh, storybooks and movies have put them out to be. I think you'll see during this uh, presentation that these wolves are just like little dogs. Once they've been humanized, where they've been brought up around uh, animals that have, or humans, uh, they're just like anything else. You know, they eat to survive. If they don't need to eat, they don't eat. They don't attack. They don't do the things that that they're uh, shown doing in the movies. So it's important that uh, you and I band together to, to protect these wolves and these animals that are uh, endangered to, to the point where well, big business makes a lot of money on big game hunting. They make a lot of money on oil and make a lot of money on a lot of different things that we as small individuals don't ever see or hear about. So stay with us. You know, one of the great things about Seacrest Wolf Preserve, they let you partake in the uh, birth and and the raising of the new pups that are born here at Seacrest Wolf Preserve. It's not every day that you get to fondle and pet and love on a baby wolf. But that's twofold. Number one, it's good for you and it is also good for the wolf. As he grows and he gets put back into his environment with his other wolves, he will be able to 
get along with humans and interact and that's what their life is really all about thanks to Seacrest Wool Preserve this is the latest pup that was born here at Seacrest Wool Preserve this is baby Chaco baby Chaco is a female and she is just so beautiful she is a British Columbian wolf and she is the only surviving sibling from Chaco and we will be speaking with Miss Cynthia Watkins shortly about Chaco and baby Chaco the breeding program at Seacrest Wolf Reserve is probably one of the best in the world Miss Cynthia, with uh, some of her volunteers, breed these wolves to be the greatest wolves that they could possibly be. But not only for Seacrest Wolf Preserve, but for wolf preserves all over the country, even the world. The pups are introduced into the human sector shortly after they're old enough to survive away from mom and I don't I and what it means is only 10 days that are taken away from their mother and they're kind of hand raised by Miss Cynthia and a few of the volunteers and when they're old enough and healthy enough they're brought out and introduced to the humans during the tours on Saturday mornings or afternoons depending on the part of the year you get to hold the wolves and and actually interact with the babies and it is just quite enjoyable I mean there's tears in your eyes your hearts pounding and you'll never go away the same person you were before you came to Seacrest Wool Preserve an understanding of just how important these little fellas and girls are is just one of the reasons for Seacrest Wolf Preserve to be in operation. It is a very, very important educational role necessary for the survival of wolves in the United States and the world in general. important part of Seacrest Wolf Preserve is the educational tours where individuals go into the holding facility and interact with the wolves at the same time being taught exactly how wolves survive. The tours are usually conducted by the wolf experts like Mr. Wayne, Miss Cynthia, Candy and a lot of the other volunteers who spend a lot of time here at Seacrest with the wolves. If you have knee or back problem and think that if you go down you won't come back up, then feel free to come here and sit on the log. If you're pretty okay with getting back up, we're going to come here. Go to Lock your house. Your bar. You don't want people coming in your territory. Wolves. Very territory. Don't want all the wolf types in their territory or their home. You put up signs, they put up signs. Their signs say, keep out, no trespassing. Go beyond this point and you will be killed. What do their signs look like? Urine, their entire home, 100,000, 200,000 acres, strange wolf crosses that boundary line, they smell that urine, uh oh, you're not supposed to be here, that means keep out. If you doesn't go back home, you'll be killed. Many biologists have found dead wolves along those border lines. Very territorial, just like you are. All the ones male figures, human family, male car, raising, teaching, taking care of the 
youngsters in the human family tonight. Back in a wolf pack. All in the way of the moon. Wolf pack. Large roll. Raising of the babies. Teaching them. Making them. Making them places. Showing them. on the planet has a purpose to keep the planet healthy. What is the purpose of the wolf, or the job, or the beauty of the wolf to keep the planet healthy? Thin out, deer, elk, moose, buffalo, plus hot, these big guys with the big horns. Will they eat a tall animal sometimes? Not all that often. Well, coming. Out of the cloud, out of the den. They will start standing up, their their First time, we had to put him in lockout <laughs> six or eight months ago because he got too big for his britches. <laughs> he started rising up too soon. You can't do that in a wolf fight. Now you can in a human family. The omegas and the betas can rise up in a human family and start running the family. Mom and dad best. And they do a lot of times. They make for life. They make for life. When one of them gets killed, it's as destructive, detrimental to a wolf pack as it would be to mom or dad getting killed in a human pack. Family starts to fall apart. Does it not? A wolf pack? Starts to fall apart because remember, the leaders, one of the leaders is gone. Somebody else has got to step up and be a leader. It don't happen always. It don't happen in the human So, you know, in our society, there are people that are more important than others. Let's face it. They're more important people. There's a change. Rebuilding every one of Water eventually covered up. Unless he moves, you won't even see it. Polish. Now we have some British Columbian wolves here. In fact, the little puppy up there is a British Columbian wolf. She's black. She's found in the dark shadow rainforest of British Columbia. That's why he can't run off in the forest like he could in the wild because he can't get through these fences. So we have to step in and intervene and try to be the mediators and try to get this settled down so nobody gets hurt. And sometimes it gets to be a problem. And sometimes they do get hurt. If you'll notice, he's got a little scar under his right eye. That came with the price of becoming the alpha. And that happens in the wild, and it happens in captivity. 
As you can see by now, wolves aren't the big bad wolves. They're not. They're lovable creatures that are very family oriented. Uh, when they're around humans, they're like dogs. They love to be petted and loved on, love to play. They love little treats and they can fall asleep while you rub their backs. Every wolf here. The reason why is that we want to make sure everybody gets their fair share. They've been fed by hand, individually. They have amazing hearing. They can hear six miles in the woods and ten miles in open clearing. They have incredibly long teeth, as you notice. Their canines are longer and little more curved than a dog of this size, say a shepherd. And that is because they're designed for whatever they grab onto stays with them. Wolves have 1,500 pounds of pressure in their jaws. And what that kind of, to make it a little easier to understand, is that's roughly twice that of a Doberman or a Rottweiler. So they, if they grab on, the parts stay with them. So if these were not absolutely amazing animals and not what we all grew up thinking, that they eat grandmother and blow over pig houses, if they were... When they were alone, without human contact, they became come the family unit, where the alpha is in charge, and everyone down below is uh, is in their own domain. So, if you get the chance, please support not only the Seacrest Wolf Preserve but the, the wild wolves in general. Uh, there's a big push to destroy all the wolves, and that's that's just not right. There's a place for the wolves here in this world. They have a reason for being here. Uh, they help control and the environment, and we need to support them and, and let them live. So come on, folks, give a howl for the wolves, and uh, hey, we'll be right back with Miss Cynthia, the story of Jocko. Up Seacrest Wolf Preserve and their fight for justice for Chaco. Chaco was uh, killed by one of the uh, Florida Wildlife Officers and it was unnecessary and uh, we may need to get some legal fees and so forth. So uh, call or write to uh, Seacrest Wolf Preserve and order your t-shirt. It's $20.99 and it's a great value and pretty too. We're here at the uh, Seacrest Wolf Preserve, and uh, this is one of my favorite places in the entire world. And this is one of my favorite people in the entire world, her and her husband. This is Cynthia Watkins. She is the owner and founder of uh, Seacrest Wolf Preserve. It's the only place, I think, in the, in the Southwest, there may be another one, but I, I never heard of it, where you can actually go and interact with wolves. That's correct. Now, I'm from uh, uh, upstate New York, they say there's wolves there. I never saw a wolf. I never saw a coyote. Uh, the first time I came into Seacrest, it was awesome. It, I mean, it was awesome to see these animals. I guess it was kind of, I don't know whether it, it, it took my, the wind out of my sails or just the opposite. You know, you hear the big bad wolf, big bad wolf, oh, <laughs> the big bad wolf, you know, and you read these stories about out west in the movies about, oh, they got to have armed people out there to protect people because they eat so many people. I mean, they eat a they, hundred people a day, you know, <laughs> and to come find out that's all a lie. It's a lie. It's, it's big business and it's a lie.
But Miss Cynthia has the Seacrest wolf preserve, and she has wolves, five different species. How many? No, there's one uh, one main species. One main species. The gray wolf. The gray wolf. And then the Arctics and the British Columbians are subspecies. Subspecies of the gray. Okay, and she they're all here, and you actually pay for your tour, sign a form, and walk in there with them. And you have people in there that are tell you all about wolves. They don't, they don't pull any punches. They tell you exactly what wolves do. And guess what? They're just dogs. <laughs> they're like dogs. They're your pets. They're, they're lovable. They're, they're family oriented. These the wolves have better families than a lot of people I know. But anyway, um, I, you know, I, I, I got to say you and, and Mr. Wayne do a fantastic job. And you know, you. two of the things is, number one, your property is awesome. It's spotless. It's, I mean, I just flew my drone over the entire property, and even, they've got what, how many acres is here? 430. 430 acres of just beautiful, beautiful contoured landscape. And each one of these wolves has their own, whoop, I hear the wolves. <laughs> They're howling again. They have their own enclosure, and uh, it's just awesome. You guys do a great job. And the second thing mm -hmm. is, the volunteers you always have a hundred yes. volunteers we you do. know and if a person if people are doing a good job and they're taking care of people they come back and it, yeah, believe me every time I come here it's the same volunteers but there's more of them so what I need to hear from you um, I'm here a lot six or seven times now it's been a happy jovial time everybody's happy um, Everything seems to be going good. Then all of a sudden, I get a, I read in your on your Facebook page that something happened here. What happened? Well, on the morning of April 30th, um, the, as you know, we have large enclosures for oh, the wolves. Large, very We've large. We tried to recreate for them a beautiful, natural life that mm -hmm. they would have in the wild, mm -hmm. uh, with these large habitats with lakes and ponds. Uh, on the early in the wee hours of the morning of April the 30th. Uh, the dam on the north end of the uh, 15 acres of enclosures gave way and collapsed. That's in the Arctic enclosure. And set off a tsunami type effect that swept south through the 15 acres of enclosures, sweeping out other dams and ponds, gathering debris and velocity. And by the time it reached the south end, uh, it was huge and very loud, and it impacted uh, the 10 foot steel fence, 9 gauge steel fence, and blew, out, blew it out into the wetland. And that was the enclosure where the rare British Columbian wolves lived. And Chaco, one of the rarest specimens in captivity, fled very traumatized into the woods. Hmm. How many how many wolves were in that enclosure at the time? There were two. Two. Chaco, Chaco and his mate. And his mate. And she was pregnant or she had the babies already? She had already had the babies four okay. days before she the flood. The were they healthy at that time? Actually, there were be uh, three beautiful um, females and three beautiful males born. But unfortunately and very tragically, mom contacted a bacterial infection and it spread to the pups and we pulled them at one day of age. Mm -hmm. uh, but in spite of all of the vet care and around the clock care, they all passed away but one little female. Okay, but that, and that happened before the flood? Four days before the Four flood. Four days before the flood. Okay, so here, here she is. She's already stressed. B believe me, I can just imagine what it's like if four or five baby wolves are in distress, don't know if they're going to make it or not, and this poor lady will be going crazy. I just, I just know it. I just know it. I know her from my heart, and, and the loss of a, of a, of a wolf is, is tragic, and it is tragic. But that's not where the tragic or the, the, the bad part ends, is it? No, unfortunately, uh, it is not. The, um, the beautiful wolf Chaco uh, fled into a swampy area about two miles from the wolf preserve here. And of course, the, the wolf preserve was destroyed. Mm -hmm. And uh, my husband and all of the volunteers were here uh, trying to uh, contain the wolves and put the uh, fences back up and so forth. But a neighbor tracker and myself found Chaco about two miles from the wolf preserve in a swamp on the very first day I called him and he came out to me trembling so glad to see me licked me in the face sat in my lap and I only had oral tranquilizers uh, that I placed in raw meat and fed to him 
uh, my husband came with a crate. We were going to try to contain him and bring him back to the wolf reserve. But as it turned out, the oral tranquilizers were not powerful enough to sedate him to the level required to be able to crate him and bring him back. Did they don't, so they don't like the crates? Not really. I mean, it's I unnatural for them to go into uh, a, a crate, so. Okay. It, you know, that, I mean, it seems like, you know, he was so glad to see and so forth, and now all of a sudden, he's running away from you. Were there more people there? Or? There were. There were some neighbors that came and some strangers that he um, was not familiar with. Okay. And so he... He went back into the that was just the saying, wooded area. Was his yes, traumatic experience. Yes, and who was going to where he? They was met well. Self, right? the, okay. the neighbors met well, but yes, it did. Okay, so you lost him that day, but you you kind of knew where he was, right? Absolutely. He, he was, you know wolves well enough to know if he's got a place that's safe and that's where he's going to stay, right? Yes. Unless there's some e exterior circumstance to make a move. So what did you do next? Well, I came back home. By then it was late afternoon. Mm -hmm. And as required by law, I called my fish and game officer. Seacrest Wolf Reserve is a very credible facility. Mm -hmm. We've always worked with fish and game on the highest professional level possible. Uh, we've even held training sessions here for fish and game. But at any rate, I'll call Mr. Shores, the officer within whose jurisdiction Seacrest lies. Uh, we've worked with Mr. Shores for several years, and I trusted him. So I called Jerry and I said, we've had a flood. Uh, Chaka, one of our rare wolves, was out, but don't worry. We know where he is. I've just, he's just come out of the woods. I've tried to sedate him. But the oral tranquilizers are not enough to sedate him to the level to bring him home. And I need for you to come out in the morning with your dart gun and work with me to, contain, uh, to sedate him humanely and bring him back to the wolf preserve. Hmm. And... Uh Okay, so you went home, you probably felt pretty good, didn't you? That, hey, you yes. know where he was, you know he's safe, he's, yes. he's healthy, you know, and that he's going to be home yes. tomorrow. That, that was a pretty good feeling. It was. Okay, next morning you wake up, go out there to get, get the uh, Chaco, and what happened? Well, when I arrived, not only was Mr. Shores there, but he had brought a large number, an excessive number of other officers with him, many, in fact, so many I didn't count them. Mm -hmm. They were rumbling up and down all the roads, everywhere you looked. Uh, there were a large number of them and um, of course they were wearing their guns uh, and so forth. And Is anybody carrying any any guns, you know, rifles? Oh, they were all armed. They all had They rifles. were all, well, they were all had their handguns, their handguns and, and there were rifles in their vehicles. Yeah, so. right. Okay. Um, a lot of times I am being an ex-police officer, uh, Sometimes we foolishly open, run our mouth a little bit. Was there anything said that, that maybe you overheard that maybe could have made you, uh, gave you a, an impression of what was actually going to happen? Well, at one point I went down into the swamp by myself back in the same wooded area to see if Chaka would come to me. And when I, uh, the tracker neighbor that was helping me track Chaka stayed back with fish and game. When I returned to the truck, uh, after a long while in the swamp and Chaka would not show himself. I returned to the truck area where the trucks were parked and uh, the neighbor tracker came over to me and he said, Cynthia, see those fishing game officers over there? They're saying they're going to shoot him on sight. And I went over to Mr. Shores and I said, Mr. Shores, do not shoot this wolf. He is not a danger to any human, to any child, to anyone's pet. He is a wolf ambassador. Maybe it, not over a mile. Was that in the direction that they said that Chaco went? Yes, that was a little north. Okay, okay. That was a little okay, north. Okay, so what can people do to try to help you to get this mess straightened out? Well, you know, what we're asking is that Governor Rick Scott mm -hmm. uh, investigate this incident and in hold these officers accountable, officers accountable for this unconscionable, unnecessary, destructive, shameful act mm -hmm. of murdering this beautiful, rare wolf ambassador. You know that we live in a, um, a culture of death and killing. I know. And uh, fishing game uh, over the broad scope of our America, it's broken. It's not just broken in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. This fishing game agency is broken across the country. 
Do you know that fish and game slaughter over 430 wild species a day across America, most of which, many of which are endangered? And there's no accountability because cronyism is rampant. Yeah. And there's the governor. I've seen then that. The governor appoints the board, and then under the board are the are the um, officers. Okay. We're demanding reform in fish and game. We're asking Governor Rick Scott to hold these officers accountable. And we want Governor Scott to step forward and give we the people of Florida. I was born in Florida. I've lived here all of my life. My parents as mm -hmm. well. And we want a governor that will step forward and prove to the great patriots of Florida and the citizens that love and respect God's creation and is trying to preserve America's wild heritage mm -hmm. and other uh, parts of our American, um, a beautiful country that are being, um, you know, that are being run by powerful entities and overwhelmed by greed and power. But we want Governor Rick Scott to step forward. Okay, and how, how, can, how can Joe Schmo uh, on the street, how can he help? We have a great petition. It's on uh, ipetitions.com. It's called Justice for Chaco. And we're asking everyone to please go to that site and sign. Be a voice. Step forward and be a voice to speak for those that cannot speak for themselves. We're asking that all great uh, people that care about these types of things and about America's wild species. We hope that Chaco has not died in vain. And if you want to be a voice to speak for those, please sign the petition. We're trying to gather at least 4,000 signatures by August 1st, August 2nd. So please sign the petition. And we're going to take that petition ourselves personally to Governor Rick Scott and present it to him on behalf of uh, you know America's wild heritage mm -hmm. And um, uh, we want we want honor and integrity to come forth uh, on all that. levels of our state. Amen to that. <laughs> Let's start at the state and move up to the federal government. But they also have uh, SeacrestWolfPreserve.org. That's right. That's their uh, web page. Web page. And okay. we also have a great presence on Facebook at Seacrest Wolf Pack. And we invite everyone to go there. There you will find the Justice for Chaco page. And you can read it and sign it and uh, let your voice be heard. Help us save America's wolves and wild species. Let's not let Chaco have died in vain. And let's be uh, great wildlife warriors for this cause. Mm -hmm. And hey, if you get a chance, uh, Seacrest Wolf Preserve is here in Chipley, Florida. Not really, but it's it's in a it's got a mailing address yes. in Chipley. It's in a better part of Chipley. <laughs> and uh, come enjoy. Uh, they're here every day, uh, every tour. They're part of it. It's not like they just sit up in their beautiful mansion and uh, just let everybody else do the work. They are here 24/7. Uh, Mr. Wayne is out digging ditches, fixing the fences. The fences now are how much at a percentage? How how many? How much of the of the Places fixed. I would say maybe uh, 60 to 75 percent. 60 to 70. They still need 25 percent of your help. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to volunteer. Heck, your time is tax deductible. And I didn't say that right, but it's tax deductible. <laughs> but, uh, Cynthia, I want to thank you so much Can. for everything that you and your husband do. You know, I've learned so much about wolves, about animals, about just the ecosystem. And one ties into the other. You destroy the world, wolves, you're going to destroy mankind. You know, as as you say, they're a predator. What kind of predator? They're a keystone species. A keystone species. Very important. <laughs> Very important. Very important. Very important. Very important. Okay, this is Alvine with Miss Cynthia saying thank you for joining thank us. You. And uh, if you get a chance, stop by. They're... Uh, Tours are on Saturday afternoons during the heat of the summer. They have, oh, I, it's great. How many more weeks do you think you're going to have uh, baby Chaco on? Uh, oh, she'll be here forever. Oh, I know that, but I mean where, where you can actually get interact with her. It will be uh, quite a few more months. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, she is gorgeous. You know, one of the great things today was I didn't go on the tour. Uh, I've been on the tour four or five times, and I would have loved to. But I had other things on my mind. I mean, this this uh, lady here has, has got me really thinking about uh, why she had to go through what she did. 
Uh, it's not fair. It's not fair to the wolf. It's not fair to her. It's not fair to the volunteers. And uh, so I stayed here and, and, and I got some other things done. And I got to spend time with that little girl. <laughs> it was her and I just over there. And, and uh, it, was, it was just a, a great understanding. Made me understand what her dad uh, was all about. And just come and enjoy that. Come and experience that. You weren't going to do it anywhere else. Anything else, Miss mm -hmm. Cynthia, before we go? Well, I'd just like to remind everyone of what Albert Schweitzer said. You know, Albert Schweitzer said, Life outside of us is but an extension of life within us. So it would behoove all of us to become great stewards of all creatures, both great and small. Because they're all a part of the web of life. Mm -hmm. And if it starts to unravel, then it comes all the way back to us. And life as we know it will cease to exist. Mm -hmm. It will. Okay. Well, thank, thank you, you. ma'am. I love you, I love you, your Good. husband, and I love all the volunteers. Seacrest Wolf Preserve, you won't regret it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Us wolves here at the Seacrest Wolf Preserve, we really do have it great. We have people who love us and care for us, and people come to visit, they really like being around us. Not like our brothers and sisters in the wild. Gray wolves are about to be stripped of their endangered species protections. This would be a disaster. Tell the Obama administration to protect wolves. Yeah, call your congressman. Mexican grays need your help. Two hearings will be held in the Fish and Wildlife Service's Mexican gray wolf proposal. First, November 20th in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and second, December 3rd in Pine Top, Arizona. So please help our brothers and sisters in the wild. Get them back on the endangered species list. Please!